Hi everyone. Today's podcast on small and gutsy is what I'm entitling the unexpected podcast. I'm actually going to call it Megan Witt Saved My Life. She doesn't know that I'm doing that part of it. I am here on podcast 61 of Small and Gutsy to remind you that no matter how small or insignificant something may be, if it means something to you, then it is big and you can be gutsy about it. The month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And again, call it circumstances, luck, good or bad, serendipity, whatever you want to call it. I just got diagnosed with breast cancer. It is even hard for me to say those words. And I'm alive and currently in treatment, not because my doctor recommended any additional tests for me, but my friend Megan Witt sitting next to me today told me to get an ultrasound when they were just watching a mammogram that they believed was benign. Eight months ago, I could have been diagnosed had I known that. Megan and I only talked about this this past summer when I was ready to do my six month follow up. And she said, please get an ultrasound. And I am so grateful to her that I listened. She has her own story, which she will share in a moment. Katie Couric, the well-known journalist, interviewer, writer, and celebrated personality, had this experience in July and is now making it her mission, as she did once before, as a result of her first husband's death from colon cancer, to remind us all to take care and be advocates in our own health care. Like Katie, who was, I think, a very, um, you know, was consistent about her own health care. She had missed one mammogram. She always got mammograms and ultrasounds, which I didn't even know I should. Uh, I was absolutely on top of my health care. I had regular colonoscopies. I had regular mammograms, pap smears, everything. Watched my blood sugar, my cholesterol, all of that. Screening and preventative care are the most important aspects of catching disease early. But what's so challenging is what if you don't know? What if you don't know about a particular test or screening that is pertinent to you? In my case, and in Megan's case, and in Katie's case, when you have dense breasts, ultrasound on top of mammogram is really the way to go. We are here to share our stories and provide resources for you. So if you need a resource, we want you to advocate for yourself. Tell every woman and man who knows a woman you know so that you can get treatment early. The earlier the treatment, the better the prognosis. And we will wish you a happy outcome as both Megan and I hope to have. Welcome to Small and Gutsy, our podcast featuring nonprofits and social impact organizations under $10 million. My name is Dr. Laura Whitkoff, and I'm excited and proud to be your host. We hope you'll love the stories as much as we do, and perhaps you will find needed services, a job, volunteer, invest in, or donate. And for all of you followers, and thank you for following of Small and Gutsy, we've just applied to become a nonprofit ourselves. We are thrilled to move in this direction, enabling us to continue to meet our vision of interviewing as many smaller nonprofits and social impact organizations as we can. I decided to ask Megan if she would join me today because my feeling is that we hope to have a social impact even though Megan and I are not organizations around breast cancer awareness, but since it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we have both wrestled with this, she is still in treatment, I am about to have surgery and treatment, that we feel that this is a message that just has to get out there and is really part of the mission of Small and Gutsy to help bring visibility to an area that is unknown to many, many women. So that's really why we're doing this. So please do pass along any valuable information you hear today to others and send me the name of any organization you like featured at lwitkoff at gmail.com. That's two T's and two F's. My guest today, if you haven't already guessed, is my dear friend, Megan Witt. We have only been friends for a few years and bonded quickly while she and her then business partner were taking photos at the local farmer's market. And my husband, Mark, and I thought it would be fun to take pictures of us and our dogs, Max and Molly. And the friendship was sealed. Little did I realize 
that more than that would be sealed as we moved along in our respective lives. Megan is smart, witty, super fun, has a million friends, and I'm truly not exaggerating, she does have a million friends. She's a great friend and is deeply good to her core, full of wisdom. She researches everything that is important to her and important to others. She's interested in what's current and cool, and she's one of those cool friends who just knows how not to overdo it. And she makes the best charcuterie, appetizer cheese, nut dried fruit boards of anyone I know. I'd like to think I do a reasonably good job, but I'm giving the trophy to Megan. And Megan, of course, deserves the trophy for something much more important. She truly saved my life. So Megan, I want to have a conversation with you, and we are going to have a conversation with each other. We're each going to tell our stories and hope that we can share our experience to really help you find a way to advocate for yourself, share with a friend, tell as many people as you know. We know Katie Kirk is way better known than we are, but we want to do our part and support Katie in this effort. Of course, we can't take responsibility outside of our own vetting of the information we shared today. And of course, it's very personal to us. So we encourage you to do your own due diligence and research as much as you can. Katie Kirk is a great resource. She did an entire podcast on her next question with Katie Kirk, uh, relaying her experience. And she is posting constantly during Breast Cancer Awareness Month on all kinds of issues around breast cancer and it is really a great read and has tons of resources so please take advantage of what she has available we're also going to post that on our social media as well we just want to help spread the word please share this information and the podcast if you like to everyone you know we all know women and we should celebrate them by sharing important preventative and diagnostic information that can save their lives it will saved their lives as Megan pushing me to get an ultrasound saved mine. Megan and I want to have a conversation with each other in the hopes that we that what we experienced will inspire you to advocate for your own health care, regardless of what your doctor says. So here goes. So I'm welcoming my wonderful friend Megan, who's here. And, and my first question to really ask you, Megan, is tell tell us your story. You're already through a big part of your cancer journey. I'm just starting mine, which right. I shared with everybody. Um, I didn't share the details of mine, but I'm going to piggyback on yours. Okay. So. so in January of 2019, I went and had a mammogram, my scheduled mammogram, and there was a suspicious area, which they said was fine. Right. It's ex almost and exactly what happened to me. They okay. didn't do an ultrasound. But I didn't know about ultrasounds at that point, but mm -hmm. I have very dense breasts. I knew that. So in April, I noticed the lump had definitely changed. What I had felt was the suspicious area, and I did you feel it yourself? Yes. Oh, interesting. Because yes. I never felt anything. I, I'm big on um, doing in the shower, like me too. Yeah. But I felt we nothing. Didn't. Well, not unusual. And neither you did my doctor. Get to I, yeah, true. Yeah. That's I mean, true. It's just you know you can't always yeah. count on that, which is why you have to have ultrasounds. I actually met this woman, who in she's in um, Los Angeles in the Brentwood area, and she has a private ultrasound business. And I met her, and she was telling me the significance of dense press and ultrasounds and how important it was. And I was like, wow, it just really stuck with me. So this never came through your healthcare provider, no. but really through a personal encounter. Well, the person ed educated me about about the the necessity of ultrasounds with dense press, and that's her yeah. business. So anyway, I then my lump had changed, and I thought, this is a problem. This, this is not, I'm not going to wait. The other thing is, you know, getting appointments is difficult now, as we all know, and it was then. And so I called my internist and she said, well, why don't you come in and, and, and let me look at it? Mm -hmm. And I was like, actually, you know what? I'm confident that this needs to be seen by a surgeon. Mm -hmm. So could you make three recommendations for me? And I was able to get in with somebody two days later, only because I'm a bulldog. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but thank God you are. Thank God. Mm -hmm. But so then I went in and she looked at it. She said, this definitely needs to be screened. And and I'd had the mammogram and she, and I said so what about this ultrasound we mm -hmm. need to have an ultrasound and she said yeah she said we probably should have an ultrasound um, 
but you know, I had a full blown lump at this point. So mm -hmm. then I went in and had the ultrasound and I remember asking that then they, they quickly, you know, told me that it was a problem and that I then needed to have it biopsied. Yeah. So that was, you know, a couple of days later. But I remember saying, could somebody pull up that mammogram from January and tell me why they didn't tell me to get an ultrasound? Right. And then somebody and there. needs to tell me mm -hmm. why they didn't notice it. Could somebody do that? Well, needless to say, nobody was willing to do that right. at the hospital right. or the doctor. Right. Um, but fast forward, I then read. So that was lot. January, that March, was March, and then I had the surgery biopsy, yeah. in May. Wow. Okay. And I had stage two breast cancer, scary, which I then scary. had a lumpectomy. I always think it's sort of fascinating to hear what people's treatments mm -hmm. were. So I had a lumpectomy. I had um, six, four weeks of radiation, and I did not have to go do chemo because they it was it had neck onto my lymph nodes. Thank God. So I was really lucky. And I'm mm -hmm. on tamoxifen mm -hmm. and will be four or five years. It's been three years. Right. So amazing. Yeah. So I love that you're here and thank you for sharing. Well thank you for and, inviting me. And thank you for actually um, spreading the word to me because I like Megan had a similar situation but I wasn't as much of a bulldog because I didn't know so for those of you and I think I advocate for myself usually yes. pretty well and I think like Katie Couric I'm very on top of my health care and this is what is so scary about this mm -hmm. I never felt anything I went for a mammogram and they saw something but said benign, mostly benign. I think it's benign and didn't even kind of question. I have dense breasts too. Didn't even know I but had dense breasts. didn't they tell you to come back in six months? Six months instead of right then and there. And right. so I talked to, I re thought my doctor would say something to me. He didn't say anything. I talked to some friends mm -hmm. because that's where we go for healthcare advice actually, mostly our friends. That's why we're doing this podcast. And, um, and I had friends that said, oh yeah, don't worry about it. I have dense breasts and it's usually nothing. And, and it, even on my mammogram, it said probable benign. I never felt a thing. So this is in um, February because of COVID, even po a little post COVID, it took me forever. February 2022. Yes, this yes. past February, yes. but I was supposed to have one in January, but couldn't even get in. Right. So I went to a different radiology in the same larger group. Mm -hmm. And so they said, don't worry, don't worry. So I became very good friends with Megan and we were taking a walk. And I was telling you about this, knowing in my gut or the back of my mind, I'd never had a mammogram that needed any care. I mean, I, no one had ever told me I had dense breasts, even though it was in my file and right there, I didn't look, I didn't read my medical stuff. All I wanted to ever know is you're fine, don't worry about it, keep moving forward mm -hmm. in life. Silly and blindly maybe, and that's why we have to be advocates for our, our own health care. I, because of you, Megan, and I know you hate when I get so emotional about this, but because of you, I am sitting here today in treatment. Okay, but so beginning what happened? Treatment. Okay, how yeah, did that happen? You're so funny. What? So what happened was you said you need an ultrasound, and I said I don't even know anything about an ultrasound. You said ask your doctor to because put a script. you had a, a suspicious area and a very dense breast. So like, right? Why didn't they recommend that? Um, it's a really good question because so many of those suspicious areas, I think I understand, are maybe benign. But why not do a very inexpensive? inexpensive non-intrusive test which is an ultrasound it's literally gel on your breast and a machine that is not expensive and not intrusive and by the way what annoys me about healthcare insurance companies these days is they don't pay for diagnostics and that's a whole nother conversation it's unfair and it's unjust yeah. so my doctor said I don't think you need one mm -hmm. but I'll go ahead and write it up anyway and I loved his assistant and she kind of did what mm -hmm. I asked her to do because then I got very sort of pushy so I went for my six month follow up. I tried to get one earlier and they would not see me. I remember talking to you and you said, oh, I've, I'm, I'm supposed to come back in six months. And I said, you make an appointment now. I said, that's not right that they're gonna leave you hanging for they six did. months. They did, they wouldn't and let then, me. And then you said, okay, well, my appointment's soon, whatever. And I'm like, okay, now you have to make sure you get the ultrasound. Okay? You're so on top of but, it. But now Thank God I for it's you. funny how you got your ultrasound. Oh yeah, this is kind of yeah. sad and you yeah. know, so I went to my mammogram appointment. They would not let me come in before six months because the script said six months. So six months in the day, I was there. So I said, I'm supposed to get an ultrasound and they said, no, you don't have it. We don't have you scheduled for it. And I said, what are you talking about? The script went to you. I know it went from my doctor. Luckily I keep everything on my phone, thank goodness. And I pulled it up and they said, well, we never got it. And I said, well, I have it and, it and I need to get it. And they said, well, we don't have, we don't think we have time today. And I said, you know what? 
I'll sit and wait. Yeah. And because your voice was in my head and I thought I'd rather know at this point because putting it off is going to make me so anxious because of your experience. And thank God that you shared that with me. And that's why we're doing this because we want every woman to know. And we're going to send this out to everyone <laughs> to get this information out there. Katie Kirk's doing a great job for us. But we feel like there's still people who don't always know who Katie Kirk is. Well, they might know who she is. They don't know who Megan and Laura are, but hopefully this will help. And um, so I'm in the office and I wait and wait and they go, okay, we'll get you in. And I thought, okay, great. So they take me in for the mammogram and the ultrasound and right after the ultrasound, wait, not wait, the mammogram. Didn't they also, I you, but didn't they also say, and you're gonna have to pay $25 for this? Yes, for any diagnostics. So for the $25. second mammogram, yeah, like for the did. second mammogram, I had to pay a couple hundred, which a lot of women wouldn't be able to do. For right. the ultrasound, which is relatively inexpensive, I ended up having to pay $25 and I said, I don't care right now what I, I need to have some information. And as soon as they did the ultrasound, the radiologist came in and said, you know what? We need to biopsy a section. And I, my heart just sank. And I, and of course they said, it's probably nothing. Don't worry about it. I think if I ever hear it's probably nothing again, I'm never, I'm not going to pay attention to it. And um, so I did uh, the biopsy. I had to wait two weeks. I did the biopsy. It came back with um, invasive lobular carcinoma, which is a very difficult cancer to feel, which is interesting because it wasn't in the duct, it was outside of it. It is invasive, which means it can spread. I'm praying to God it hasn't spread to my lymph nodes because this could have been handled in February and now it is October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, uh, and so I have now gone through all the tests. I did the genetic testing. So I am a candidate who does not have a genetic predisposition to any cancer, including breast cancer, although my grandmother died of breast cancer, but that's not considered a genetic link. But I want you to know, and Katie Kirk talks about this, only 15% of breast cancers are genetically linked. I think of all cancers, actually. 85% of all cancers are flukes of your cell system, of within your cells. And the scariest part of this, and I'm embarking, I haven't, haven't had my surgery yet, I'll have it on the 20th of this month. You're past it, so you are living proof that you survive, and are, look, she looks amazing. And the surgery is, you're gonna be fine, it's, it's. Right, I am having a lumpectomy because I don't have a predisposition genetically, and also because until they go in, to be quite honest, they're assuming that it's isolated in one section. They're assuming that it is it has not um, traversed through the lymph nodes, but if it has, they're always going to take, they have a test where they put dye in you and see if that lights up. And then if it does, they're going to take some of those out and then they still do automatically radiation and hopefully I won't have to have chemo. But they don't know till they go in. Right. I have an incredibly competent team. But what I'm so disappointed in, and Megan, you and I have talked a lot about this, is I'm disappointed that, as I love you and I'm so appreciative, but I'm so disappointed that you had to be the one to tell me. Because honestly, even with um, a second mammogram, they would have been watching this. It might have been a year or so later that they might have, I might have felt something finally, and then the lump would have been quite large. It is supposed to be pretty small, but again, they don't know until they actually go in because they can only see so much. I did have an MRI. So I know I'm okay on the right side right now. They do say that this kind of cancer goes from one breast to the other. However, they don't like to take out tissue that's not infected. They generally don't like to do that unless you have the BRCA gene, which I do not, thank God, do not have. So it's a scary, it's scary. It's scary, um, but early detection is key. It's so huge. Isn't your, wasn't, didn't they identify your cancer as hopefully stage one, they think? They think they can't say for sure. Right. Um, they thought yours was stage one they until they got in and right. then it was stage two. Yes. There is now the statistic one out of eight women get breast cancer. Amazing. It's Unbelievable. Yeah, it's frightening. It could be environmental. It's our gene pool. It's like a, something that goes wacky somewhere. And most likely post um, radiation, hopefully for me, and medication, medication for you, you will be considered cancer-free in the future. Right. And that is right. the hope and the goal. Mm -hmm. 
So um, Megan is an amazing human being. So is Laura. <laughs> Mutual Admiration Society. Mutual Before Admiration. Yes. And we wanted to do this podcast, and we may think about doing a series as we go through this process, and Megan continues to stay on medication. I have a couple questions for you. Any adverse reactions to the medication? Yes. Um, I'm on tamoxifen, which is an AI drug, aroma, something, an inhibitor. So yeah. our tumor, since we have the same cancer, weirdly, um, are estrogen seeking. Mm -hmm. So they are, uh, they love estrogen. So they have tried to tap down the estrogen in my system with this drug called tamoxifen. Side effects are, you know, drier skin, yes. mm -hmm. um, hair loss, maybe, actually, but I shouldn't say that. Some people have no, no. side right. effects. They don't feel it at all. Some people, you know, have a tougher time with it. I think I'm like on the sort of low end of, of Feeling side, side effects side. Of, of tamoxifen. Um, you know what, if that's what they have to do, right. if that's the way so you can I protect feel. yourself, right. it's a small price to pay. It's so worth it. And there yeah. are also foods, I think, that actually are supposed to reduce your estrogen. Um, but I would, you know, obviously with medical information today, we want to do the most advanced, um, use the most advanced knowledge that we can. And do you know about the estrogen testing, which I've never done. I, I should, you know, hmm, we should no. probably pursue that. Yeah. So there's, they can literally test the estrogen in your system and see how much is there and whether or not the pill's working or not. And so as far as food, foods that, you, you can know, take away the estrogen yeah, or like, supposed to inhibit a, it. We can get that tested. I would love to do yeah, that. Yeah, I would like to. I didn't we know. should do that. It's interesting mm -hmm. how you learn so much from people who've been through this versus certainly the medical community has done an amazing job and has amazing strides in this. Uh, and at the same time, gathering information, at least for me in the beginning, was and still is overwhelming because everyone has a way forward. I may be more traditional on the medical side, but I also will look at um, alternative support to Definitely. the medical community. Yeah. I won't uh, not do the medical pieces, and I encourage you to think about what works for you best versus um, you know uh, taking someone else's advice. You have to do your mm -hmm. own due diligence, and everybody's chemistry and body's a little bit different. Right. So we want this message to go out to every woman we know and every man we know who knows a woman. Right, because right. you have, may have wives, uh, sisters, uh, the children. Too, I think I heard from Katie's yeah. thing was, is it forty percent of women have done dense breasts? Yes, there's a it's few. No, high. it's fifty. I think it's 50, over fifty percent. 50%. 50%. Okay, so it's pretty high. So, and she has a podcast um, that I mentioned in the opening, but it's really worth listening to. Mm -hmm. Next question with Katie Kirk, and she does a whole series on this and walks mm -hmm. you through her experience. Mm -hmm. She knows how lucky she is. We know how lucky we are. And one thing I want to also point out is from the research, uh, Ashkenazi Jews and African-American women yes. have the highest percentage of breast cancer. Yes. Um, whether they have dense breasts or not, I don't know, but I know they have the highest percentage. Mm -hmm. So I was speaking to a girlfriend of mine because Megan's whole thing is, please do a pay it forward, which is why we're doing the podcast. And I said to her, she has a mammogram coming up this week, and I said, insist on getting an ultrasound because again it's an inexpensive test compared to an MRI or right. even a mammogram and it gives you a different slice of information that uh, in fact um, the doctor on Katie's podcast talks about when you do a mammogram it's like for this type of cancer it's like looking for a snowball in a mound of snow so it's very hard to detect and that's why the ultrasound does something different and will show it in a different way. And that's the, really the, one of the only ways to detect it. Speaking of school, again, this woman that does yeah. the ultrasounds in, um, in Brentwood, um, it described it to me and she showed me a picture of a tumor in with an, uh, a tumor a mammogram. with a mammogram mm -hmm. and a tumor with a ultrasound. And a tumor in a mammogram is white, so is all mm -hmm. the breast tissue. Really hard to decipher. Dis right. right. Mm -hmm. In an ultrasound, the tumor's black and the tissue's white. Like she's like, it's a no-brainer. Right. Like why you wouldn't want to do this. And why it shouldn't be standardized it's, for every single woman out there. That's Even it needs to be. If you don't have, you know, if you don't have dense breasts, maybe it's not such an issue because you'll see something and right. it was great that you felt something. Right. I felt nothing. Right. Scary. Ever. Ever. So it was a shock to me to even be in this category right. when I was thought I was pretty low risk, hadn't done the genetic yeah. testing. 
but given that my mother didn't have breast cancer, it was a good likelihood that that genetic gene wouldn't have been right. passed down to me, but you never know. And so again, these tests are, this particular test is not expensive. It's, and it's, it's not, inv- it, there's, it's an no, invasive, right. the other, um, the other thing I remember was this whole dense breast thing. Like I remember the doctor telling me I was getting my biopsy and he's like, you always have to have an ultrasound. And I said, why didn't, didn't I someone... get the memo? Mm-hmm. I missed the memo so and I. I'm very in charge of my healthcare. How right? come nobody told me this right. until I was 56 years old? Like yeah. how come? So all those, all of you out there, find right. out if you have right. dense breasts or not. Please do. Ask. Ask, look at your mammogram, see if it says it on there. And even if you're not sure, ask your provider to get an ultrasound even as a baseline. Now, Katie Kirk was getting ultrasounds and mammograms every single time. She missed her appointment due to COVID for six months. Mm -hmm. I had my appointment and wasn't told that I could get an ultrasound and they wanted me to wait six months. And I just feel like it's, there's a level, maybe I should just say, a lack of both awareness and a lack of urgency um, on the part of many doctors who don't see this as like you and I feel is a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. It's just a no-brainer. And the other thing I just want to point out is it is much more cost-effective, this is for everything, to catch something early than far along the path. It's a larger conversation. It's about a, a choice much choice larger, the choices larger conversation. Yes. Yeah, but also what sometimes physicians make a decision, not thinking it's an issue if they assume low risk. So again, anyone with dense breasts, mm-hmm. get an ultrasound. For those of you who know my podcast, um, I always ask these quick and gutsies. Megan doesn't know I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it. And we're going to do it for both of us because although Megan is not an organization, we are doing a public service announcement. So I'm going to ask Megan these questions. Mm, great. And, um, and we may end up with some of the same answers. Who knows? But I'll answer them too. How's that? Okay. So what is at the top of your wish list? And it can't be money or funding for breast cancer research. Let's say, let's take money out of the equation. Okay. What's at the top of your wish list? For me personally, or just? you Either way. Okay, finding a cure. Yeah, finding because a cure. Because right now, we have treatments for cancer. Yeah. There are and lots of new treatments and treatments and treatments and treatments. It's true. And I just, I think I sent it to you today. Someone sent me a New York Times, was it? No, no, it was in New York Magazine. It was in, there was an article about um, a potential vaccine for breast cancer. Amazing. 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 Wouldn't that be? So it's like HPV. Yeah. There may be Amazing. something on the horizon. And yeah. I'm so glad that women's health, in some ways, is being taken more seriously because of these events that keep happening. I think that women are getting louder, too. Thank you. We you know, are. That's a big part of it. Yeah. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. Like, yeah. We need to advocate for ourselves. Not only advocate for ourselves, but be those bulldogs. Be yeah. those advocates. And by the way, for ourselves and in my situation, for each other. Mm-hmm. Because yes. you really did that yes. for me. You really read me the right act. I did. Said, I did. Because I was like, Nora, I'm not kidding. Right. You have to do right. this. And I was like, oh, they're yes. telling me six right. months. Well, not you a big want to deal. Leave the doctor. You're like, but my doctor says this. Right. right. I know, but. I know, but please do this. Do it. And you said, if they won't give you one, if you won't get yes. a script, go to the person I know. Yes. And I was really grateful for that mm-hmm. because I think I would have done that. I hope I would have done I that. I still do. I go and I go once a year. I get an ultrasound once a year. They'll let me have an ultrasound once a year. Yeah. And then I go and I get another one. Every six months? Or... Once a year. So twice. I get two ultrasounds a year. Yeah, one I pay great. for and one is through insurance. That's great. I might do that too. Yeah. Because mammogram on my breast isn't going to show anything. So I'll still do it. But on top of it, I They still get... say, I've spoken really in depth with my doctor about this. Like, you still have to get a mammogram. Of course. And ideally an MRI too. Yeah, MRI is more expensive oh, and more invasive. Harder to get, but I figured out how to get it. I got my third mam- MRI this year. Oh, they said you only get help. one. You only the insurance says you only get one MRI post cancer in your first year. Mm-hmm. After that, they won't pay for anything. Wow. So you'll have to tell me. Okay. I'll tell you that. This later. is my advocate friend. <laughs> We're going to start sharing this information. Why not? What you have to do is you have to push. And, and you push. have to make a yes. case for it because yes. I've had to do it for other yes. medical issues. Right. This is one that you just can't stand still for. Mm-hmm. So it's too common. 
Yeah, it's I mean, too it's too pervasive. Who's had breast 100%. cancer? Was dealing with breast cancer. Yeah. So my wish, because I have to answer my yes, own I'm question sorry. too. No, okay. are you kidding? I love yours. Yours is the top wish. Mine is number two. Is that this information gets out there so that there is not one woman I meet who doesn't know about ultrasound. Right. And right. the reason I'm saying that is because through this process, I have met women who have been staff at a hospital during my medical care and I've said if you have dense breasts please get an ultrasound and they look at me literally deer in headlight and have no idea what I'm talking about and I have said look I am there to tell you you don't want this happening to you or if you do you want it to be stage 0.5 if you have to have a stage so uh, that's my wish. Okay, question number two. If you were to think of a song that describes your cancer journey, which is a hard one, I know, what would it be? Oh my god! I know, sorry. Um, something about uh, hope and being positive and grateful. I don't know. What's yeah, that I song? like those lyrics. Yeah. There's a lot. There's um, something out there. Yeah, there's a lot of ones that I think um, we could sort of come up with together as a theme song. One for me is I love Diana Ross anyway, but Ain't No Mountain High yeah, Enough. Perfect. Great. So we're going to push that Good one. one. Okay, I'll, I'll jump on that. And then um, and then Happy, you know? Yeah, and, I love right? it. Just, it's such a fun dance. Song? Right, so you sort of have to go, because one of the things that has been challenging for me personally, I don't know if it's really been challenging for you. I think you have a better mindset than I do. Um, <laughs> I'm fine during the day. I'm fine when I'm working. I'm fine when I do things I love. And then all of a sudden night comes and I have to go to sleep. And I go to sleep and then I wake up with just nightmares. And I don't, you know, I feel like getting your mind in a place of positive forward thinking mm-hmm. and doing whatever you need to do, whether it's a song, whether it's a mantra, whether it's a poem mm-hmm. you can read, something that makes you feel hopeful. And then having everyone you know, everyone you love, everyone who maybe doesn't know you but will do put a good word in, send prayers, good karma, whatever you have to people who you know are struggling. Okay, Anna, maybe I have one more thing to that. Yeah. Maybe stay off Google. Yeah, I, I mean, know. You can get makes into you a crazy. really bad yeah. little spiral if you yeah. go too far on yeah, Google. I and I think like my doctors have been so great and they're like, we think the information on that, that patients find through Google is really old. Yeah. And yeah, that's a good point. They're like there's so many more treatments yeah. and more current things that aren't there yet. Yeah. So we idea. urge you strongly to I call us and to contact us if you have questions and don't ask Dr. Google. Yeah, that's really yeah. good. You know what? Google's not a doctor. Did yeah. not get a medical degree. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it was my friend who told me to get the diagnostic, right? Um, at the same time, and also laughter. You have to have laughter. Megan makes oh me laugh gosh. all the time. Well, we all have to laugh. So you have to laugh because yes. it really is good medicine, I have to say. And in our social media, we're going to put in resources. Katie Kirk has always done a ton of research. She is using the month of October to constantly post. You can get on and sign up for her newsletter, which I did. Listen to her podcast because it really walks you through. We just wanted to do an added push. So, Megan, I know you're gutsy. What do you think makes you gutsy? Oh, uh, believing in myself. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. You know, in my intro, I talked about trusting yourself, not second guessing, holding on. You can hear the noise out there, but keep it at bay. Right. And I feel like you are gutsy that way. And what I also want to say is when I think about, I don't know if I'm as gutsy as you are, but I learn to appreciate and get on the gutsy wagon. But and you're I'm gutsy, on, and so what do you? And, what makes yeah. you gutsy? So what makes me gutsy? This uh, uh, oh, interviewer, yeah. now the interviewee. Right. I think what makes me gutsy is not being afraid to put our names out there. Some of you who are listening to this don't know that Megan and I are dealing with breast cancer. And this may be the first time you're hearing this. And it's still, and I'll get emotional. Yeah, that's okay. It's that's still okay. hard for me to say the words, I have breast cancer. Uh, nobody plans for this. Nobody wants it. Uh, nobody did anything to deserve this. Right. And, so true. You know, and so we have to hold on to each other as women mm-hmm. to know that our bodies are important, and what we choose to do with them 
in order to be healthy is also our decision. But we need the help, the guidance, and the know-how, and the knowledge, and the access to be able to do it. So I think that's what makes me gutsy is putting it out there. I think, and you look at this podcast you've created, I mean, you're, what a great answer. What is something that um, insiders who know about breast cancer, but maybe um, outsiders, outsiders, but really insiders don't really know about our situation. It's similar and it's different at the same time. So what is something that you feel uh, an, an outsider and certainly maybe even an insider doesn't know. Oh, I know that's a tough that's, one. That's a hard one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I guess I'll answer the question in a roundabout way. And Perfect. that is okay. that there's a lot that they don't know because this is mine. Yes. And I don't need to get anybody's approval or input unless I want to. Yeah, that's really good. So, um, mm-hmm. I'm happy to help anybody. Like I, you know me, I would talk I anybody to the blue in the face about it. But but I'm it's it's mine. Yeah, it's yours. Yeah, you. I think that's a beautiful thing, and I feel similarly. And I'm newer in this journey, and I know that I'm going to face a lot of things where I'll call you being a little tearful or, you know, tired or whatever I am, and I feel similarly to you is that every body no matter how similar is Mm -hmm. different right and everybody's set of cells and everybody's defense mechanism and everybody's way of coping is entirely different yes and you have to embrace that yes that's so true and it's hard when you're with people are like you're going to be fine you're going to be fine when you don't feel fine because something's in your body that shouldn't be there or you have to take something out of your body through medication that actually hinders something naturally that you should have right? right Estrogen is part of our makeup, mm-hmm. and there are things that you won't that's, have as a result. Right. It's, it's so something, pe- things will right. change. And so people can say, you look beautiful, you look great. Yeah. You have to feel that and feel okay. I say, you know, thank you very much. And the, 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 this, is my, this is my least favorite thing that people say to me. Good. I'm glad you're telling me. You're us. so strong. Nobody's stronger than you. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> if only you knew. Right. <laughs> I fall apart on a regular basis. Yeah. You yeah. know? How do you think that? Right. But, right. That's a terrible thing to say to somebody. I think that's so true. I probably said that to you because Everyone I admire you. Everyone in the world, world, has, in the world and So now I won't say that, but no, I'm going to say so no. Rush. But what I want to say to you is every bit of the way that you present yourself is a model for me. Whether you mean it to be or not, doesn't matter. It Lori needs to find some more friends. So, yes. <laughs> Clearly I do. It's my only one. Um, but I, I do feel like what you're saying is so important because it, when somebody isn't strong or they are approaching, like someone like that, people say to me, you have such a positive attitude. Oh, and I'm thinking, right. exactly. I know, but I'm thinking, just exactly. talk to my husband yeah. who thinks I'm the worst attitude yeah. in the world. So, um, like in the moment, in the yeah. moment, right now, in this yes, moment, we're having fun. Yes. We're doing great. <laughs> we're hanging out together. We're doing a podcast. But the truth is, I get in the shower, I look in the mirror, and I cry like everybody else does, and say, "Why did this happen to me?" Right. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a good person, and I eat pretty well, and I watch things that I'm supposed to watch, and I don't smoke, and I don't do this. Whatever it has no bearing on it. Right. And so you have to take that out of the equation. And somebody also said to me, you will appreciate a piece of cancer. It's hard for me to swallow that pill. And at the same time, what it has done for me has created moments of gratitude, Mm -hmm. like real gratitude. That's beautifully said. Really beautifully said. Yeah. You have a wonderful partner. I do. I'm very care lucky. Of you. you have yeah. great medical care. Yeah. Like, aren't very you lucky. lucky that you know we have access to that? Mm-hmm. Your children are totally supportive and wonderful. Yeah, for sure. A lot of good things. Yeah. I, there's a lot to be grateful for, but holding on to that is sometimes a challenge. And so, if I can find moments where I really hold on to mm-hmm. those then I feel like I've done my part for that day. That's awesome. That's all I can do. That's great. Right? Mm -hmm. And friends help. Friends help. Friends and loved ones really help. Out of the blue, when you get a card or a text or someone says, I'm just thinking of you. so nice. It makes just such a a difference. So the last question I always ask, which is kind of silly for us in a way, if you could get one influencer or celebrity to talk about this issue, uh, who would it be? Katie Cooper. Yes, Katie Cooper. She's doing it. And, you know, her 
life as glamorous and wonderful and amazing as it is. She had to raise two kids without a husband. Right, who died of cancer. Who died of colon cancer. She put it on the map so everyone knew how right. serious it was. Yeah. Her sister died of cancer, I believe, mm-hmm. and um, and she is making herself incredibly vulnerable, both by her medical, uh, you can watch videos where she goes through the medical process, uh, and where her And will we has, ever forget her doing the colonoscopy on the day? Right, right, but she talks was, about, you know, pretty... Uh, Earth shattering at Very, the time. Yeah. Like, God love her. Right. She increased. She even knows the percent. Like she increased the number of colonoscopies exponentially by doing that, which is pretty which darn is amazing. Wanted. Yeah. And she even made. I think Jimmy Kimmel. Did she make Jimmy Kimmel do it? I think so. Did he? I don't know. I think I don't so. Know. I'm not sure. Yeah. But um, you know, we. I never asked you this follow up question, which I will, because in listening to her podcast, something really occurred to me. Um, and I hope you don't mind. I'm going to ask you this question. Cool. You'll see. Okay. What's the question? Because I'll share my experience. Um, when you had to tell your four boys, and she has a four amazing, stupendous boys, um, what was that like? Okay, I'll have a surprising answer for you. Okay. Um, I one thing that I learned with cancer is that it's really all about other people's experiences, mm-hmm. and me managing that is a great distraction and a reality. Mm-hmm. Like. So telling my kids, they each had a different reaction. And of course they love me and care about me, but really they're devastated and scared. And mm-hmm. one of my sons even said, you know, I think mom's kind of making a big deal about this. Because it was a defense mechanism it's for him. Totally. He had to be now, like, the I brother that he told that to uh-huh. wanted to punch him. <laughs> I, bet. <but laughs> I bet. I won't <laughs> ask who. No, 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 no. no I'm but, but I think that for me right you're it's a great point you're wow. making everyone has their own every single person reaction. that i tell right i have to consider how right. it lands for them yeah for and sure how i can make that easier for them okay i agree to a point okay if your kids yes make it easier yes, for them and them. they're all different mm-hmm. i think other people either step up and surprise you in beautiful ways totally or surprise you in ways that they just can't do it. And people can only do what they can do. That's what I've learned. And you have to understand that. You just go, that's who they are, has nothing to do with me. I have five children and uh, and they, it was a range also from uh, being really upset, uh, particularly one of my boys was really, really, really upset. He knew I was having a biopsy because he happened to be visiting so it, I sort of had to tell them in a way and I was hoping to wait to give them good news um, but I called each one ind- individually mm-hmm. and because I couldn't be there to see them and they were you know my message was I'm I'm gonna be fine even though I didn't know at the time I'm gonna be okay I'm gonna go through the process they believe I've caught it early all of those positive messages um, one of my sons calls me daily, pretty much, just yeah. to check in. Makes them feel better. It makes them feel better. I right. have to remember that. And half yeah. the time we talk about everything else but cancer, he which is... know you're okay. He wants to know yeah. I'm here. And I think in some ways, uh, we as mothers, and fathers are important too, don't get me wrong, but we as mothers sometimes are really, have had to show strength um, in a certain way, mm-hmm. and so they expect it. And so my kids, a couple of them said... You're going to beat this because you're so strong. And I'm thinking that's a big responsibility when all I feel like doing is crying. Right. <laughs> um, because you've, you've taught them that. Like, you've been such a strong role model yeah, to yes, them so. for their entire lives. I mean, yeah. without going into detail. Right. Um, and you too. And me too. Yeah. And I think yeah. that it's re- extraordinarily hard for them to yeah. see us in a weakened state. I think that's true. Yeah. And I remember thinking about my own mother, which is really interesting, Unrelated to this, when we meet for going travel together or see each other, I would expect her to walk as far as I could walk, do all this stuff. Yeah. And as she was getting older, it was I was not intolerant, but it was so hard for me to digest mm-hmm. because she was always so mm, mm, on the go, right. and, you know. And so I think my kids see me as someone who hasn't faltered in a way, regardless right. of what I've had to deal with, and I've had to deal with a lot, yeah. as you know. And uh, so, yeah. Interesting, but I think your kids probably think of you the same way. I, I think very similarly, but both of our families, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So our final message to you is do any diagnostic you think you need to do, hold on to what you believe is right, 
push your healthcare provider to get you what you need. Insurance should pay for this, they don't always do. But if you have dense breasts, get an ultrasound. Continue doing your mammogram. Yeah, don't don't, do it don't low stop up. Do, doing right. that. But absolutely go forward with the ultrasound because you will get more information, you will get peace of mind, or you will have an action plan. And now I feel like sometimes as cancer is run the mill, we'd like to eliminate it completely. And the earlier you detect something, the better off you are. Thank you for listening. Share this with everyone you know. And Megan, I just want to thank you for, this is my podcast and you put yourself out in a really vulnerable way. And you didn't have to. There may I'm be people who don't so know your to story. do that for you and to help other people. Help other people. Yeah. That's what it's about. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. You're the best. You're the best too. Love you. Okay, love you too. I want to thank my partners in this endeavor, my co-producer, sound engineer, and composer, Pavel Franson, my graphic designer, Nate Addy, my amazing, amazing guest, Megan Witt, for coming on the show to help me spread the word, my husband, Mark Witkoff, who stands by my side at every turn and is the biggest small and gutsy fan who has the best positive attitude, which I honestly wish in times like this that I could truly emulate. His positive ad attitude moving forward and knowing everything will be okay is a constant source of support for me, even when I fight it and say, you don't know for sure. I really feel that in my heart. And of course, all the folks, friends, and family who've sent prayers from every faith and guided and inspired me. And thank you for listening. I'm Laura Whitcoff, and please spread this message to everyone you know. Thanks for listening.